What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, or if you're new here, welcome. I hope y'all are having a great day, a fantastic day, a tremendous day. Whatever way you want to put it, I hope that day that you're living right now is going great. Now, today, as you can tell by the title of this video, we're talking about things to consider when storing a vehicle. Now, this doesn't just apply for people like me who got to put their fun car up for the winter, the little summer car, got to put it up for the winter. No, this can apply for anybody in the south, north, or wherever you live. Whether you're storing an ATV for the winter, your car for the winter, or you're going on a two-week business trip and you don't want that nice Mercedes to get scratched up or nothing, let's talk about some things that you should consider while storing these vehicles. And yes, all of these things that I'm talking about, I'm about to do to my vehicle and I already have done some of these things because my vehicle is going to be put up for four months. It's sad, but it's something you gotta do when you're trying to maintain a vehicle in this sort of fashion. So let's get into the first thing on this list. Preventing fluids from freezing or corrosion and rust occurring in the tank or the reservoirs. So of course, let's start off by talking about the gas tank. There's an argument. Some people say run every last drop out of your fuel system. However, most people say just fill it all the way full completely, you're good. So filling this gas tank is going to prevent rust, corrosion, and freezing. Now, if you're not storing your car that long, less than 30 days, you should be good. If you're storing it for 30 days or more, completely fill this tank on top of that. If you're storing it that long, it's highly suggested to go ahead and get a fuel stabilizer. This is going to help further prevent that rust and corrosion from occurring. And aside from the gas tank, you're going to want to top off all the other fluids. If your coolant tank is looking a little low, looking towards that minimum fill line, you're going to want to fill it up. You don't want that to turn into a slushy, or you don't want humidity and all this other stuff affecting it while it's being stored and nothing's really going on with it. But at the same time, there are people who argue that you need to completely drain out your complete coolant system, you know, empty your radiator and everything else while storing the vehicle because there's a chance that it starts breaking down, contaminating things, as we talked about rust and corrosion. On top of some people saying that it can turn into more of a thick jelly substance and you don't want it gelling up in there. So I'll just be topping off my fluids and a lot of people just top them off. They don't go and drain everything out. Now, moving on from topping off all these fluids and making sure that the rust and corrosion doesn't occur, or, you know, everything doesn't turn into a slushy. Let's talk about maintaining the battery. Some people take the battery out of the vehicle to store. Some people leave it in the vehicle to store. The one thing that you are going to want is a battery keeper, a battery tender. And if you get a good enough battery keeper, it's going to cycle your battery as if your car has been turned on and was actually driven and the electronics were actually used so the battery is not just sitting around. This battery keeper is going to make sure your battery does not go dead over the winter time. Now, some people do argue whether you need this or not. Some old heads used to use these all the time and then one year they got lazy, you know, let the battery die and they just recharged it in the springtime, started the car up and they said it's fine. The issue with that is it can actually affect the battery and the lifespan of the battery by letting it drain completely. So having a battery keeper on the battery is going to be your best and safest bet. It can work without one. You can recharge the battery. Will it hinder the performance or lifespan of that battery? Possibly. When speaking about topping off all the other fluids and everything else, I forgot to talk about the oil change. You are going to want to change your oil before you store the vehicle. Some people have argued if the oil is very lightly used, it's fine to store for a couple of months, two, three, four months. But at the same time, if you think about it, any professional place that stores vehicles or crate motors by themselves, will have fresh oil in there the whole time. But personally, I'll be doing a full oil change to help prevent damage to the engine's components. Now, for the people that I mentioned that are just storing it for a business trip just a couple of weeks or so, obviously you don't need to do this. Now, if you're going to store it for two, three, four, five months, you're gonna store it for a year or however long, if it's a long period of time, this is something that you most definitely should do. Now let's talk about something kind of minor, but it most definitely needs to be spoken about. The windshield wipers. That little strip of rubber is going to adhere to the windshield if you just leave it set for four months. 
Now there are ways to make sure that this doesn't happen. Obviously, you could go ahead and just take the windshield wipers off your car. Just take the blades off completely and return them in the springtime or when you get the vehicle out of storage. If you wouldn't like to have to remove them because you might, let's say, go out and drive the car during a really nice day in the winter and you don't want to have to go put them back on the vehicle, you could go ahead and leave them pointed away from the vehicle in the out position. But if you're using a car cover to cover it, it's not really going to work, you know, having a giant bulge right there. It's not going to fit your car properly. So if those two options don't work for you, there's the old shopping bag trick. Go ahead and get you a Meyer bag, Costco bag, Walmart bag, whatever bag you got. Get yourself a plastic bag, wrap up those windshield wipers, tie it up, make sure it's all good, and set it back on the windshield. Then that rubber strip will not adhere to the glass. Now let's talk about maintaining the tires. So there's two parts to this. We're going to be talking about flat spots, and we're also going to be talking about the actual compound, the rubber, being degraded by oils and other things that come up to the surface of what you are parked on. So starting off with the flat spots, there are two direct ways to handle this. There are storage ramps that are the shape of the tire. So as the car sets in storage and the tires are resting on those little ramps, it actually holds the shape of the tire. I apologize if the camera angle is a little different. Somebody called me, interrupted the video, whatever. Another method that some people prefer so they don't get flat spots is lifting the car up and leaving it on jack stands. Me personally, I don't like it setting on jack stands the whole time, but some other people may disagree with me. Now that is talking about the flat spots. Of course, when talking about flat spots, the one major thing that you should do is air up your tires quite a bit. A lot of people will max out what they can fit inside of that tire to make sure that there is no flat spot possible. Now let's talk about the second factor of maintaining the tires. The actual rubber, the compound being broken down. We do not want a whole bunch of oils and gross things that shouldn't be on the tires to get on the tires, especially while it's sitting, you're not really moving it around and then you're not going to wash it because you're not driving it. So that's just going to be setting there. You're not gonna go uncover your car in 30 degree weather in the middle of the winter while it's snowing to wash it and give it a good shine. You know what I'm saying? So that will be sitting there and we don't want it to get on the tires in the first place. So of course the jack stands will have those tires hanging in the air. They will not be making contact with the floor. And those storage ramps that hold the shape of that tire lift the vehicle off the ground as well. So you have nothing to worry about with those either. So those two solutions are the best of both worlds. However, it's up to you whether you want to store the car on jack stands or leave it on the floor with those storage ramps that'll maintain the shape of the tire. Now, while we're talking about the storage and keeping it in place, do not use your parking brake. The jack stands will hold your car in place and these storage ramps will hold your car in place. They're basically wheel chalks. The parking surface may fuse with the wheel and become stuck, creating an unpleasant situation when you go to get that car out of storage. And to add on to this little subject that we're in, I would recommend parking on a tarp, especially if you're outside on a grass patch or gravel, because a lot of oils and contaminants tend to rise to the surface. And there are people who report that not only the tires were affected, but the actual wheels and undercarriage were affected and had a layer of disgusting, residual, oily type substances that they just couldn't get off within the first wash and they had to polish their chrome wheels about five times before they went back to how nice they were before storing it in the grass. I just have to interrupt the video for one second. I wanted to talk to you guys about the new merchandise shop that just went live. We have a couple of old designs that we have revised from the old merch shop along with one or two new designs and there are currently a couple more in the making as we speak. So if you guys further want to help support the channel, further the builds, and rock a cool piece of merch while doing it, I'll leave the link in the description below. Now let's get right back into where we left off in the video. Moving on, let's talk about plugging up the exhaust outlets. You do not want critters and little creatures to go and find their way into your exhaust pipes and try to make themselves a little warm home. By simply taking a shop rag or just some aluminum foil that you have in the kitchen and wrapping that around the actual exhaust outlet, you're going to stop these things from happening. Me personally, I'm a little paranoid, so I'm going to shove a rag in each outlet and I'm gonna put some tin foil over the top to make sure it's double sealed. Of course, if you have cutouts or dumps, any other outlet, you are going to want to plug that up as well. 
Even if it's underneath your car and a pain to get to and it's right off your headers, come spring, a mouse being in there is going to be a lot more irritating than getting under there and just shoving a cloth up in there. Now moving on, let's talk about cleaning the vehicle. This is one of the most important steps. Cleaning the exterior of the vehicle is going to make sure those bug guts, those bird droppings, that dust, the dirt, and everything else does not fuse to your paint and help speed up corrosion you're going to want to remove all the little imperfections that you can before storing the vehicle. So it's recommended that a nice thorough hand washing with a very nice microfiber mitt be done before the vehicle goes into storage. Now you could technically stop there, but it's not recommended. I would at least wax that car to get that extra layer of protection on there throughout the cold months or throughout storage. So after you hand wash the car, then wax it, Adding a layer of ceramic coating would help tremendously. That's just gonna be another extra layer of protection. If you talk to many detailers, this is what they do. They layer products to give a deep, deep, deep look to that paint, make it real shiny, and give an extra layer of protection with each thing that they do. Now let's move on to the interior. First off, what you're going to want to do while cleaning the interior is get out anything perishable. You got a little pack of crackers or something. You got this or that from a road trip. Nothing needs to stay in there. Everything should come out. Don't even leave a little stick of gum in there. And make sure to close every single vent on the interior of that vehicle. That could be a ticket for those little pests to get into your vehicle. Other than making sure there's no perishable items and shutting all of the vents, you're going to want to thoroughly vacuum and wipe down the whole interior. If you're that serious about it and want to prevent dash cracking and things like that. You could use a spray similar to what I use. It's a ceramic coating interior spray and it kind of just gives that extra shine and extra layer of protection against UV rays and everything else. And while you're in there, you might as well throw up some sunshades over your windows to make sure you have an extra layer of protection against sun damage, heat damage, whatever you would like to call it. And lastly, if you have leather anywhere in that vehicle, it would be in your best interest to hit it with a leather protectant, cleaner, and everything else. Most of the leather protectants are leather cleaners. They're all in one solution, so you should be good to go. However, I wanna let you know the actual reason I'm telling you to do this. The change in temperature as that vehicle sits in storage can affect the leather and make it crack. You do not want to store your beautiful leather seats and get back in there in four months and have a crack across your driver's seat. It's going to irritate you quite a bit. So do the quick and easy task of spraying down those seats, letting it set, wiping it in, wiping it off, making sure you get every last little bit of that leather, whether it's on your steering wheel, shift knob, or every single one of the seats, so you're not upset with cracks in your leather next season when you get the car out of storage. Moving on, let's talk about one of the obvious things, a car cover. No matter if you have it stored in a garage or in a driveway, a car cover is going to further help protect that paint. We all know that a layer of dust can form inside of a garage with a car sitting there. And it would be better to have that layer of dust setting on top of that car cover. And if you're in a driveway or something of that nature, a car cover is going to stop all the dirt and debris falling, the dust and everything being blown around, things falling from trees. If you have trees around that you can't really help but park near in the rain, the rain can be so acidic and damaging to the paint. It's just best to keep that rain off the vehicle to begin with. And then of course, if you're in a region like mine where there's a cold season, keeping that snow off of the vehicle is very, very important. Please do not just throw a sheet on your car or throw a tarp on your car unless you don't care about the paint because it is going to damage the paint. You need a breathable car cover. A breathable car cover will make sure that that moisture does not get trapped oxidizing the paint while it sits. And at the same time, it's going to keep most of the contaminants off of your vehicle. Now, car covers are not perfect. You go watch any YouTuber who's taken off their car cover, whether it be It's Just a Six or Drew Peacock, there's going to be a tiny bit of dirt, debris, dust, anything, whatever you want to call it, on the vehicle. It can still happen, but keeping the bulk of that off of your paint and off of the vehicle to begin with is just the best course of action and is going to help prevent corrosion. Now let's talk about the cabin and the engine bay and the trunk further. You can use cab fresh to keep pests out. You can throw it underneath your car. You can throw a couple packs in the engine bay. You can throw it in the trunk. You can throw it under your trunk. You know, you can set up a little system to kind of 
deter pests all around your car. But you also want to keep moisture out as well. So those little silica packs that you get in medicine or in your packs of beef jerky or that come in your little backpack when you get it, those are to make sure that nothing's damp or anything like that. Now local pharmacies tend to have these, but you may have to wait a day for them to actually collect them because they throw them out at the end of every night. You could ask your local pharmacy for those or you could use baking soda. People have been known to put a pile of baking soda on a paper plate and leave it in the vehicle during storage. Or one of the things that a lot of people have started doing is using dryer sheets. So dryer sheets will deter pests as well as promote a dry environment. So just taking a crap ton of them and loading up the actual cab and trunk of the vehicle could be very helpful, but I would still get cab fresh and keep it under the vehicle and more so around the vehicle and in the engine bay just to make sure I don't have a little mouse or something that gets up in there and starts gnawing at my wires. One of the last things that you may wanna consider is lubricating the door hinges, or you may open up the door to your summer cruiser and hear a very annoying creak and regret not oiling up these things. Now, the last thing that you may want to consider, you may not want to consider, is contacting your insurance company and adjusting your policy. If you want to keep cruising your vehicle on nice days and everything else and get it out once in a while, do not do this. But if you are going to have it put up in a garage, on a lift or something, not moving whatsoever for four months, this is something that you might want to consider to save yourself some money. You might be able to take that extra money that you save and throw it into some modifications for the car. Now, if I had missed anything whatsoever, please drop it down below. If there's something that I didn't mention that you think I should consider, let me know and I will most definitely consider it. If you have something that you are going to drop below, let me know why I should consider it and I will make sure to update the video, pin your comment or something of that nature so everybody else knows what they should consider and why. Now, I appreciate every single last one of you for tuning in. If you could go down and hit that like button and that subscribe button, it would help me out tremendously. Again, I hope y'all have a great day and I'll see you next week.